Well, I tried to record this on a nicer camera and that didn't work today. Uh, today I found these up on Craigslist. I was able to get a hold of two of these units. Uh, one of them, they were both together, but we're going to be doing a teardown on this one. I paid $250 for the pair of these. Not a bad deal, I thought. Uh, these are the Paramate FM45 Digital. Uh, these are first generation. Nobody get excited. Uh, they are actually genuine modules. And for 250 for the pair of them, I was... I didn't care if I didn't have the uh, controller for them. Uh, that just worked out. And I really wanted to open up one of these and see how they worked. So, I have place the other piece somewhere else uh, well we'll start with the board so I pulled off so you can see from this one this piece right here comes off uh, Pyromate does sell these to convert the older style boards to the digital boards uh, two Phillips screws this thing unplugs it is really hard because on the back side of those boards is a connector just like this so it physically plugs into that it has two connectors this is the RS 485 connector as well as the power connector these connectors are both wired down into these four pin XLRs <clears throat> now I have the version with the uh, pyro clip or quick clip version um, this is Pyromate's own spin on it, I believe. Now, let's see if I can get it to pop up. Switch hands here, maybe. Real simple design. Uh, very thick PCB board. Uh, this is serves as your front plate as well as um, all the connections. Let's just see all the traces, maybe. Yeah, all the traces running in each queue is a 45 Q. Backside, not really much is different. There are more um, traces. All your wires run down to the uh, 4 pin XLR cables. Real simple. Uh, they are very expensive. And that has always sort of confused me as to why they are so expensive. Just for these blank boards. Uh, I'm sure it's probably a little bit cheaper to get it with the speaker terminal connectors instead of the uh, quick clip type. But it always blew my mind how expensive they were. So, <clears throat> for fun, I decided that is actually a PC, not a Mac, uh, that I was going to attempt to figure out what was the deal. Um, so I was trying to read that and wasn't able to. <clears throat> now, here we go. So on this board, once you remove it, you have this set up. So, this chip right here is the RS-485 chip. This is the uh, dual twisted pair communication line that goes to the XLR connector. Uh, rotary encoders, this is for setting the addresses. I'm pretty confident that is the power MOSFET for arm and disarm. Uh, there is a way to do testing as well as, uh, uh, well, say for the arm, but you know, that's all done by switches, but I believe that is actually the uh, arming MOSFET. Let's see what else on the front side. Ah, so these chips here, as well as these three here, control, was it 24 cues? Yes, 24 cues. So one of those is actually for testing. So that's just for hot. And then one of these is for uh, lower current testing. At least that's what makes sense to me. And I still haven't finished figuring it all out. 
So as you can see here, it says revision A. That's why I believe this is a first generation. Makes sense. <clears throat> uh, as for the chips, it uses a Max. Oh, where's my paper? Oh, dyslexic handwriting, you for the win. Um, right, okay, so for the RS485, uh, I read Max 3442E, which is a fault detecting electrostatic uh, preventing device. Uh, it does use the RS485 electrical spec, not to be confused with the protocol. Uh, I've made that mistake in the past. Uh, it is not a protocol. It is just an electrical standard. Uh, kind of like RS-232. It's actually an electrical standard. The UART is actually the protocol standard. Very important. There's also RS-442 or 422. There's several other ones. Not actually protocols. <laughs> All right, so this MOSFET, these, well, they're actually called octal inductive switchers. They're made by NPX, or NXP, excuse me. They are the MCZ, or MZC, 33298. They are no longer in production. They do have the data sheet up there, and I did look it up. Uh, I did do some pin tracing to figure out exactly how it's set up. There's a total of six of these chips to give you 46 cues. That's why I believe that one of them is actually used for testing. All right. And then you got a three position switch, a dual LED so it's uh, either red or green, or orange, if you flash it fast enough. On the back side, here's the fun stuff, in my opinion. <clears throat> so you've got these uh, Centronics connectors, which are why this is such a pain in the ass to get off. Um, it, 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 it's easier to do when it's in this case. Um, I would not suggest taking this and plugging it in and think you're going to pull it out because it does bend quite a bit, a little bit scary. Uh, header connectors, RS-485, that is actually to the RS-485 chip, straight out to the XLR connector, power connector. Uh, this is a programming header. I've still yet to get it to read. Uh, kind of handy to have it pre-populated and everything. Now, with that being a program header, I went ahead and found out what the MCU is. They have gone with a microchip PIC 18F452. Um, decent little PIC. Not the easiest thing to get working. I have found the data sheets off of uh, Microchip's website, um, but I don't have a programmer. But you saw earlier was a TL-866 Heperon programmer that says, hey, we can do this. Really, it hasn't been able to, so I don't know. You'll see up here, uh, this thing has three, three fuses on it. You've got this large fuse here. Uh, I believe this is actually going to be for the main power. Uh, I've got this little fuse here, which is fused for this section, which is a uh, like a buck converter, essentially. Or buck booster, or whatever. It takes down the voltage of whatever you put into it and spits out five. Can't confirm if it's five or three, but nonetheless... It converts the power down to power all the other electronics. 
What else? What else? Uh, that's that's basically it. It's a pretty simple system. Very expensive. Uh, they want, I believe it was eight hundred dollars for this whole setup. Probably not eight hundred dollars worth of components, but still pretty cool. Pretty cool. Ah, there's the other fuse. These are uh, PTC fuses. They automatically reset uh, after they heat up and when they cool down, they reset themselves. So that's what I have for today. Um, I'll be doing a little more digging into this system, see if I can figure out any more who's banging wizards on it. Maybe pull the firmware and see if I can actually find a way to talk to it. Uh, that'd be kind of cool. Um, odds are I will tear down this one, figure out what I want to figure out. I'm really interested in how they do this because I am building a system of my own and it's just kind of nice to see how others do this. Uh, I do have oh, these little crap tastical deals as well. Uh, also opened up one of these to see how it worked and yeah you know, it's just little things like that it's nice to know what you're getting and how something works alrighty thanks for watching